Hello, freshmen. Uh, today, we will be going over graduation and registration. Um, if you don't know me, my name is Mr. Greenwich, one of the school counselors, and we'll be going over, this is technically your uh, ninth grade, one of your ninth grade seminars. Um, so you get to watch this at your leisure, um, go over it as many times as you want to, and ask any questions with your counselor as well afterwards. So first up is your requirements for graduating from Newton North. So as you can see, <clears throat> you need 100 credits to graduate from North. That may seem like a lot, but it really isn't when you break it down from year to year. It's right around 25 credits per year. Uh, for English, you need 20 credits, which is four years of English. Uh, life science, which can qualify as a bio class. You need five credits as that for that. Um, physical science, you all are taking or should be taking uh, intro to physics right now. So that will qualify as your physical science. Um, history and social studies need 10 credits. Uh, US history, you need five credits. Math, 10 credits. Uh, physical education will be five credits. So that's two classes during your freshman year and three classes um, until you graduate each year. Um, if fine performing arts and uh, technical arts classes, which, which would be five credits as well. So that's anything ranging from CTE classes, uh, more hands-on classes like robotics, um, engineering, um, any music and or art classes as well. Um, and electives, uh, as you can see, that's 35 credits. That could be anywhere, anything from uh, world language uh, classes, some TA classes in the future and things of that sort. Hi, I'm Mrs. Dakota, and I'm going to talk to you a little bit more about your fine performing and technical arts requirement. You need to um, earn five credits of fine performing and technical arts in order to meet the graduation um, requirement from Newton North. Some of these um, classes are your art classes, your visual arts, or your traditional art classes. So arts, ceramics, photography, sculpture, the art history classes. Um, performing arts, which is any of the music and theater classes. Applied arts would be more of the newspaper editing and management course, your yearbook, or the TV media um, arts exploratory course. Business technology is all your um, business courses, I'm skipped over, I'm sorry, arts technical, those are any and all career vocational and technical engineering classes, all those courses count. Um, the um, English electives would be journalism, yearbook, or speech. You know, the math courses would be the computer um, programming and computer science classes, and for the PE and wellness requirement, um, that's your chi um, child studies and PE course. Um, again, these are all contingent upon budgeting and staffing. If you are not sure if you've earned um, any credits towards this requirement, um, I would recommend that you reach out to your school counselor. And also, I definitely recommend not to wait towards the latter end of your high school career to start earning um, credits towards these courses. Start now um, and you'll be done before you know it. So we've talked a lot about how many credits you need. How does that break down for you? Um, in order to become a 10th grader, you are required to have earned 20 credits. And then for 11th grade, you're going to need 44 credits. For 12th grade, you're going to need 72 credits. And again, 100 credits to graduate. So what does all that mean? How do you actually get credit? So pass a class for the year and you get your credits. So if you take a full year class, that's something like English or math, uh, something that meets all year, you're going to get five credits for that class. If you take a class that lasts just a semester, this might be something like art minor, uh, you're going to get two and a half credits for that class. If you take a class for one quarter, so maybe you took like photography minor, you're going to get 1.25 credits. So of course, PE, health and wellness, those classes are one quarter, which means you get actually one credit. We make it different just because we like to confuse you and keep you on your toes. Um, so you can see those add up really quick and you will get to that 100 a lot faster than you think. And if you look at your credits right now, many of you have five academics. So if you pass all those classes, you are at 25 without any electives or anything else. So things are in really good shape. Don't get caught up on the number because now that you know what it means, hopefully it makes a little bit more sense. Mrs. Kennedy here. Welcome to the registration process. Your teachers are gonna start discussing possible courses for you for next year, the week of March 8th. And they will be putting those recommendations into your pre-registration worksheet.
Our opportunities book will be ready on March 15th. So you'll be able to read about possible electives and other important information. Remember the importance of balance in your schedule. When you make decisions, you'll be held to them. So think carefully before you sign up for electives. And I wanna give you a quick look at what a pre-registration worksheet looks like. This happens to be the worksheet for the upcoming freshmen. You can tell that by the freshman core and sexuality and health class that's listed. Your sheet will look very similar, but you'll have a choice of PE classes. A minimum number of 29.5 credits is expected in your schedule. Please work closely with your counselor to make sure your schedule has balance, challenge, and enough credits. Hi, I'm Ms. Lasky, and I'm going to be talking today about curriculum levels. Um, so for many of you during your freshman year, you were either in um, college prep or advanced college prep courses. At the freshman level, the only honors class offered would be math, um, with the exception of a few extenuating circumstances. Um, so as Ms. Kennedy was saying, you're going to be having conversations with your teachers starting next week, March 8th. Um, one of the conversations that you will be having will be around the curriculum level that a teacher is recommending you for. So given that a number of courses are offered at um, the honors level. If you are somebody who has been taking um, primarily advanced college prep courses and your teacher recommends you for an honors course, you're gonna wanna take into consideration um, challenging yourself and then also striking a balance with the courses that you take. Similarly, if you've been taking college prep courses and one of your teachers recommends you for an advanced college prep course, you're gonna to wanna to think carefully about that and have a conversation with your teacher to get a better idea of what that class will look like next year. Uh, you'll also wanna have a conversation with your family. And then as um, you learned earlier this week, you'll be meeting individually with your school counselor and we look forward to talking to you about curriculum levels. We're going to, as a rule, encourage you to challenge yourself um, and in the same vein, take into consideration the fact that you're going to have lots of things going on in school and outside of school. So really the name of the game that you're gonna be hearing for the next four years is all about balance, about finding out what courses um, offered at the college prep, advanced college prep and honors level would look like and how that would fit into your overall scheme. Then there are courses that aren't leveled. Um, so our PE courses aren't leveled, a number of electives. Um, once that course catalog comes out and you have an opportunity to take a look at that, you'll have a better idea of what courses are offered at um, a leveled perspective and what aren't. And as um, will hopefully be true with any of these presentations, if there are any questions that come up, your school counselor is really your best person to go to, to ask any questions um, and try to figure out what selections might be best for you based on what your teachers recommend. Your teacher is definitely the person to talk to about curriculum levels. Certainly if you're somebody who's interested in moving up and you wanna get an idea of whether that's going to be possible, these types of conversations will be happening with your classroom teacher. So certainly um, put all of your thoughts out there when you're having those conversations with your teachers. And then any questions that remain, you definitely wanna follow up with your school counselor. All right, hi, Ms. Filio here. And it's been said before, but I am here to say it again and again and again. As you design your sophomore schedule, please make sure you have balance. So what are some things that you want to consider when you are thinking of balance? First of all, it's the number of challenging classes that you will be taking. We recommend taking a maximum, maximum of three AP or honors classes. Um, if you are recommended for more than three AP or honor classes, we're gonna send an email home just to make sure that you are picking and thinking about um, choosing which classes that are right for you and how much work that'll be and having that conversation with you and your families and your school counselors. Um, second thing you wanna take into consideration is free blocks. We recommend that you have at least one free block throughout the week and then each semester that's so that you have time to do your homework hang out have a break in the middle of the day meet with your teachers and school counselors and 
do what you need to do. And don't forget about your outside activities, whether that's extracurriculars, sports, clubs, um, if you might want to start working, um, having like a part time job next year, think about that as well and think about any responsibilities you have at home, like if you need to take care of siblings, chores, keeping your room clean. Those are all things that you might not be thinking about when you pick your classes, but will affect the amount of time that you will have for doing classwork. So as mentioned before, the minimum number of credits that you can sign up for is 29.5. The maximum number of credits you can sign up for, which is like a full schedule, completely full throughout um, the year is 32 credits. So really think about balance, think about what free time you have, make sure you have enough time to do fun things, things you love, and most importantly, take care of yourself. Sleeping, eating, exercising, all of that stuff should be included. So don't forget that when you are um, super focused on academics. And one last thing, um, be thoughtful because any changes beyond verification day will not be permitted. So once you sign that card, that you acknowledge that these are the classes you'll be taking next year, it'll be very, very, very hard to change it. So please make sure that you have the classes that you want. Hi everyone, I'm Ms. Vollmer. Um, so as you're thinking about what your schedule is going to look like um, as a sophomore, and you're considering your teacher recommendations and what electives you might be interested in, um, it may be helpful for you to think about the blocks that we are working with. Um, we'll have seven blocks again next year and try to line them out for yourself. So um, in this sample that we have in the PowerPoint, um, A block is English. You'll all be signing up for English, which is five credits. Um, you'll have a math, five credits, world history, five credits, chemistry, all sophomores take chemistry. Um, and then many sophomores will take a world language, um, though it's not a requirement. Um, you need to take a PE class and then um, PE is only one uh, quarter. So then you could potentially add other um, electives or have free blocks. Um, G block could be an elective. Um, and the credits really depend on what electives you elect to take. Um, and the opportunities book will have the listing of the credits um, and counselors will be meeting individually with their students to kind of go over these classes and credits and making sure that you have what you need. Um, the minimum number of credits is 29.5, and that would ensure that you have a free block every quarter that you're here. Um, and that is something that we do recommend for students. I think many of us have already said that. Um, it is really important for um, students to have free block in their schedule um, for many of the reasons Ms. Filio just mentioned. And it's, it's something that most students do have. So if you're thinking like, oh, I don't know if I should fill out my schedule or um, is it true that other students are gonna have free blocks? Yes, everyone ha should have free blocks in their schedule. Um, and if you are unsure about how it's all gonna fit and work, um, do talk to your counselor about how it all makes sense. Um, but this is just a rough kind of idea um, for you to lay it all out, A, B, C, D, E, F, G. Right. Hi, Ms. Johnson here. Just to wrap things up, um, most of you have heard to you utilize your counselor. Um, some of the other resources don't, you know, do this, feel like you have to do this alone. Reach out to your teachers, your school counselor, your, the, your parents, guardians, um, and peers. But be careful when you're talking to your peers about classes. They may have a different opinion. So I would just... Um, Take a look at the descriptions, and if it sounds like something that might interest you, um, go for it. Uh, but know that we're all here and through this whole process, and we look forward to meeting with you all. All right, thank you everybody for listening. And again, just to wrap up, talk to your counselors, talk to your teachers. We are here to support you. All righty, bye.